Well, first of all, I really want to congratulate the organizers, the Minister for Tourism, the Events Committee, St. Lucia Tourism Association, and everyone who helped, the police in particular. Everybody chipped in to make the festival what it was. And I want to thank them. I want to thank them for buying into the vision of giving St. Lucia a festival that is world-renowned. Giving St. Lucia a name for something, right? And St. Lucia, right now, St. Lucia is known. We have reestablished our name as a country where there is a big music festival, a big jazz and arts festival in May. And that's worth millions of dollars. It's not like boxing in paradise. It's something that, that, that it's an international, it's an international event known in the entire world. Listen, right now, St. Lucia is known that in May, we have a jazz festival. And I want to tell you, next year, it's going to be bigger and better. Mr. Pierre, you said the jazz festival is worth millions. More than millions. More than millions. Yes. Explain that. More you see, millions, so first of all, I think, it's for, first of all, people. first of all, you know our focus is always on the people. You know that. That's our focus. You, you realize that... The economic effect, the economic spill-off, what the economist calls the, mul the multiplier effect, was, enor was enormous. But you can't judge that now. How could you just say that you judge that? You could see for yourself. <laughs> you could see for yourself. Right. You could see the buying. You could see the, the, the outfits. You could see the, the, the musicians. You could see the number of local artists. You could see all the people who worked at, this, at, the, at the park itself. You could see the, the, the enthusiasm of the artists. These artists now have be, will become, can become international. We can't be myopic. I'll tell you something. You cannot run a country where everything in the country is based on party politics. You understand? The Jazz Festival goes way beyond party politics. It goes way beyond that. The entire country benefits. The entire country, you can see it for yourself. You can, and furthermore, you can't have a country that depends on tourism and the people don't get the benefits of tourism. That's been my mantra, Mike, and you're not more than anybody else. When I became Minister of Tourism in 1997, my vision was the benefits of tourism should accrue to as many people as possible. At the time, at the, time the then opposition criticized me too, you know, you know that. How can you have a country where you have a dual economy when it comes to tourism. Tourism is about people. You can spend millions of marketing dollars through travel agents, through airlines, etc. And when the people come here, the local people do not give them satisfaction, you will not benefit. You need to have a, a society where the people buy into tourism. The people must buy into it because they're the ones who work in the hotels. They are the ones who are the taxi drivers. They are the ones who are the immigration officers. They are the, one, they are the ones who have to be in daily contact with the people. What jazz does is jazz creates a fusion between the people and the tourism industry. And you can't buy that. How many dollars? You know the amount of people who are on, who are on social media. You, you saw the number of cameras that, that, that were there. And where do where you think these things go? Out of the country. Not the only people now who have already booked in to come to Solution for Jazz. The number of people who have called me, who have said, listen, we come in next year. Next year we have to be bigger. Next year we may have to move it to, to, for, for two weeks. So Jazz, Solution Jazz is an advertising tool for the country. It's a well, marketing not, tool. A marketing and it's an economic event for the people in the country. Yeah, I was saying it's a marketing tool. And an economic event. Oh, okay. An economic event. It's an injection of funds that comes out through the multiplier effect. Do you want you want to have what do you want to have a, a survey? Okay, tell me, tell me, how much money did, did um, boxing and paradise bring for the country? No, we're not discussing that. Here. I just want I just want to remind you of boxing and paradise because we have tried, we have tried, we have tried, you know, we've tried before, and the jazz has been most successful. And you must understand, in 1997, we continued the jazz festival. You know, we never said the jazz festival was a creation of any any political party. We we continued, in fact. We expanded the jazz festival, we brought it to the people. But there seems to be any time there is anything that involves people, there's opposition. 
I don't understand why. Anything to involve people. We think that we must have all our wealth from horse racing. Was we can't. A, was there a budget for this year's event? Yes, there was a budget for this year's event. The budget for this year's event, in, it was included in the tourism budget. It was there. And it wasn't $8 million for the festival. It was $8 million in the tourism budget to deal with these festivals. Well, I mean, sir, you urge St. Lucians to be safe and enjoy their jazz over the week or so. Like and, and, and did they, did they of course, the of course you saw for yourself. I mean, it, it, it was a big, a big peace and love. You saw any, you saw any, you saw, you didn't see the contentment on the face of, 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 of the people of St. Lucia. Didn't you see the joy? Why, why, why are we always want a country to be tense? Why we, always, we get tense and we fighting and we we dealing with things because we lost elections? No, the country was happy. You didn't see the country. You didn't see the, the lightness in the air. Why are we always looking for tenseness? Why you why you always want to have to be able to want to spread bad news? Let's en 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 enjoy the good news. The country will benefit, you know. Because this thing is, is, is just, it's no use we believe we can, we, we can create. I'll tell you something. When you create a psychological fear in the country of bad news, even though you win elections, it follows you, you know. It follows you. Elections are one day. When you create an atmosphere of dissatisfaction and, 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 and abuse and vilification of people for political purposes, it follows you. Right now, we need to create opportunity f opportunities for the people of St. Lucia. The Jazz Festival is a creation where you can help opportunities. The musicians get exposed. What about <clears throat> our event planners? People who, who, who deal our sound engineers, who are learning from the expertise that, that come in. Creating an industry. The Jamaican economy is based a lot on music and, and the creative industries. The, the, the South Korean economy. It's based a lot on creative industries. Why do we always want in St. Lucia to sell ourselves short and to deal with conflicts? Why is conflict always the best news? Because people are disgruntled and because they lost elections. Yes. I have a question um, about the jazz festival. Please. Don't you about the artists who failed. The, the Minister of Tourism dealt with that already. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> no, <is> that <laughs> But I knew that. <laughs> you haven't had a look at every, the means of tourism dealt to the. You know what? Let it go. The means of tourism, yes. Next question, yes. Yeah, um, well, we I, another one I'm coming with you, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Um, and by the way, the road was fixed a long time yes, before. Yes, yes, yes. But in the, in, the in, the, in the aftermath, I saw um, some persons opining or calling for, um, what's it, Soka Monarch finals and that to return to um, Is that something you might be advocating only what for? Only what I advocated for was the return of the old jazz to Michael. Anything else depends on the people, the, the, the organizers. So you won't be advocating or? I will be advocating for anything for good of my constituency. But what was up my street was to open it in my constituency. Michael enjoyed it. You know, Michael is from there. You know that? I guess your thoughts in terms of the expectations for the future Jazz Announced Festivals and how they can work in tandem with our youth economic agency to bring out the best of St. Lucia's youth. First of all, we have to deal with the, the, the timing looked like the four day span, three days becoming too, too short, right? The youth economy, and that's doing well, we've been doing very well. We are on the verge of getting some external funding. And if you, if you realize, part of the economic reasoning for the youth economy was to turn young people's hobbies into entrepreneurship, music, arts. The other creative industries are part normally starts as a hobby. It expands into an, to become an, a business, and that's what we want to do. So there, there's going to be looking for a fusion between the young people, and, and that is why you, you see a number of young artists are emerging. You see, what jazz does is it gives people exposure 
and the, these young people are saying, listen to me, we can go on, on the world stage. We can do it. it, it it's a work in progress. It, it, it's always not going to happen this year. It's, it's a work in progress. And that's, this, that, that's why in, in the postmortem, um, I hope that, that the officials look at the postmortem and see how we can improve it. And you guys, you journalists, you must help us. You see, you, you, you must understand you, you also have a responsibility to the country. Responsibility, not a responsibility always to, to politicians who want to push their own agendas. A responsibility to the country. You are in, in, when in you, you are the voice, you have to be the voice of reason to help people, to help people to, 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 to understand the things happening. Um, you know, just to, uh, I guess, expand on the whole uh, youth economy agency, um, the agency has just been open for a little bit over a month. And we've seen so far about 22 businesses have received grant funding. Yes. Currently, there's 100 um, participants undergoing a business development training. Um, when you see those things budding so early on in the, I guess, establishment of the youth economy, what does, how do you feel about it in terms of changing the lives of young people? And what more can we see from the agency moving forward? Well, you, you, you should realize when the, youth, when the youth economy agency was spoken about, the, there was criticism. You know, there's a normal critic that won't work and, and this and that. And, and, you know, I read an article some, somewhere in, in, in a paper about the youth economy. And I, I mean, I felt sorry for the person who wrote it, actually. Because you should not be so myopic or should you not be so be jaundiced to criticize something for young people. I mean, you, something's got to be wrong with you. you know, but anyhow, the, the truth is the youth economy is, is it's more than exciting. It almost puts some, I mean, you know, I'm told that every day they see more than 25 young people, you know, from all over the, 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 the country, you understand? And again, the, the location again, myopic views, oh, you put that on the show, see, uh, you know, you create, why do you want to create two, two, two societies in St. Lucia? Why? Why are we trying to stigmatize an entire part of the country? Why are we doing that? The location is strategic and the benefits are showing. What I want to tell you is that we believe that the youth economy is going to grow over time to be one of the largest sectors in the country. And my last question. Yes. Um, well, based on the economic review, and the budget presentation, we saw that um, the economy is on its way to uh, recovering. Uh, but in the budget, I also noted that there was an increase in the um, public assistance allocation. Yes. And based on what I understand from the equity minister, there was also an increase in the applicants. Um, yes. So we're seeing that the, while the economy is recovering, you know, maybe some people are still of course. unable to reap those benefits or are still finding it difficult to um, have a suitable livelihood or household or whatever. What is, what, moving forward, how do you ensure that maybe what we're seeing in the boom of the economy is trickled down to those households and get them out of public assistance? First of all, we have a policy of graduating out of poverty. Graduating out of poverty. It, out of poverty. That means we don't want you being on public assistance all your life. But here's, the, here's what happened. We've put $10 million dollars in micro, in small, medium enterprises. What is that? That is grant funding and loan funding. 75% grant, 25% loan. So we, go, we are saying to these, business, these, business, these entrepreneurs, these women in particular, that here's the, here's the thing. The government is going to help you to create employment for yourself. And that is the importance of both the youth economy and the $10 million injection in the small, micro, and the, the SME. That's, that, that, that's the difference. For people to create, use their talent to create employment for themselves. Because not everyone wants to work in the, in the industries that we create for them. Not everyone wants to work in the... You can't tell me that you want to impose on people employment that you think is good for them. You, you, you understand? You can't. You have to give them the opportunity. And that is what 
the, the loan, 75% grant and 25% loan is doing for the economy of the country. And I want to urge St. Lucian small and micro and medium enterprises to make use of, that, of these funds. And there's a lot more. There's a partial guarantee scheme for small businesses. Create, because you know, once you can create, the world is your, is, 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 is your, is a, the world is where you operate from because of the internet, because of e-commerce. You understand? So we create a solution and we sell on the internet. We create a solution and we, 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 we sell through, through, through e-commerce. And that's it. So you, have, you don't have to look at it only from what's happening in St. Lucia. The technology has given us the world. The world now is, 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 is our playground. Once we can create world-class goods. And that is why the small and micro people, once they can... And if, if you notice... It comes in tangent with the youth economy. There is training, there is mentorship. Once you can create, you can sell. It's not, it's not only St. Lucia, you know. We seem to be looking only at St. Lucia, a little. It's not St. Lucia, it's the world. The world is our playground. The entire world. That, that's why we've been trying to have false, false news broadcasts to, to, to the, 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 the entire world. Because we understand that the world is our, is our, is our, is our world and the world. Yes. Please, please, please. I hear a lot of talk about social safety, safety nets for people that are not working. You have stuff about entrepreneurs, the youth economy, all of that. But there's a wide cross section of the of the um, of the population that are working and yet still cannot meet their um, their basic needs. Um, take for example a single mother with maybe three children earning a thousand five hundred dollars a month. She has a job, she's making a wage, but that doesn't mean that she can take care of her family or take care of her basic needs. Are we going to see anything to help people in that kind of situation? Of course. As we speak, there is a minimum, some people call it, I want to call it livable wage commission. There's a report that will come to that will come to the parliament, the cabinet solution, the cabinet will opine. And then the discussions come at the livable or people want to say minimum wage. You see, these things come, it's a process that you have to plan. Politicians in opposition normally make these proclamations because they are in opposition. Listen to me. Let me tell you what this government has done to control inflation. This is what we've done. Because we seem to have, to, to have forgotten this is what we've done to control inflation. Inflation is a function of outside. As we speak, as we speak, inflation on the outside is said to be a beating in certain countries. Said to be a beating. In the US, inflation was actually 4%. We want to pretend in St. Lucia as if we exist in an environment of our own. That is pretense and burden on, on hypocrisy. Inflation is a function of outside the country. Here's what causes inflation. Not only the price of goods, the cost of shipping. After 9-11, there were supply chain dysfunctions that created a, a, a problem in shipping. Right now, shipping from China, the price is going down, but it has not changed from the US because there's still these, these, um, these problems. So here's what is going to happen. When this shipping, when the shipping um, situation, situation gets regularized, all right? We hope to see a decrease in freight charges. That should cause the price of goods, imported goods, to, to decrease. And that should have an ease, unless, unless the private sector, unless the private sector does not work with the prevailing economic environment and bring the prices down. Good. Now, so the minimum, I, I want to go on, 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 on the livable wage. It's very important to me because I've been advocating that for a long while. The livable wage has to be a discussion between investors, commerce, the trade unions, and the government. We need to have a balance. We need, we need, to, have, we need to have a social partnership as far as that's concerned. Because you see, Regardless of how much profit that you make, if the environment, if your workers are not happy, 
if your environment is not conducive, you're not going to be you're not going to survive. So the minimum wage is something I'm very excited about. We're working on it, and hopefully, I hope that we end, by the end of this year, we should have a, a, a wage that will satisfy everyone. But you're very correct. Some people are having struggles, although we've tried our best. The goods in the basket, there's no service charge on them. There's no service charge. They are price controlled, right? And those service they are price controlled, and they look at their, there is no VAT on these goods either. So the prices on these basic goods basically are important. Important prices. Yes. Um, another thing. Mm -hmm. um, the 2.5% health and security. Yes. No, no, taxes. all other nuisance taxes. You, 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 you must get it correctly. Environmental levy and it's not all the tax. Never said so. But go ahead. Uh, could you well differentiate because I, I was not aware of that. No, no, no. It never said all other taxes. VAT is a tax on transactions. Mm -hmm. What VAT does is that you, when you buy, you pay. Mm -hmm. Other taxes you, is upfront. That's the difference. The the safe the health and security levy. How it is going to be worked on. We have to discuss it with the private sector. We don't have to create any unnecessary administrative burdens on the private sector. So that's a discussion. But let me tell you, it's not going to be on food. It is not going to be on food. A few nuisance taxes, nuisance yes. Taxes. Consumption tax. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people were under the impression that there would be no, more, no new taxes um, introduced after that, and now you're introducing. No, I don't know if it was under impression. I never heard so. Under impression. I, I'm, well, not saying, I'm not saying you said there was no taxes. I'm just saying people were. I'll tell you something. Do you know <laughs> the United Workers Party passed a security tax? Are you aware of that? Are you aware? that the United Workers Party, there is legislation in St. Lucia for security tax by the United Workers Party. Are you aware of that? Okay. No, no, are you aware of that? No, no. So, so when, <laughs> when, when we appear, it was, it was actually a levy. When you hear, when you hear politicians think, speak, they've lost as if they have selective memory loss. Do you know that the United Workers Party passed a bill in the Parliament of St. Lucia for a 2% security tax. Okay. Right. And a 2.5% security, a health and security levy. Um, no, it's nothing, I'm saying it's, not, it's nothing new. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. But, but, in, but uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, especially the, I'm sure the tax is necessary, but with the current economic um, situation that we are going through, that we are facing, um, is this really the right time to introduce that? There is never, let's be honest, there is never a right time for taxes. Let's be honest about it. Nobody likes taxes. Let's not be hypocritical and play at some point there's a right time for tax. Nobody likes taxes. Nobody likes taxes. Nobody. And no government likes to pass taxes. But there are certain things you have to do. We have a situation where we spent over 300, 300 million dollars on hospital that has remained unfinished. We know that. We have a situation where our nurses are leaving. We have a situation where we, our, our security, our security in the country needs to be upgraded. We have a policeman. In, in, in an environment that didn't change. We have a grocery police station that was supposed to be built from 2016 and it was left unbuilt. We have a situation where it is only the Labour Party government that has built new police stations in the country. The only government that has built police stations in the country. Apart from when in the year 2011, when the Barbono police station was either computer started, I'm not going to into the details of that. The Labour Party government. So our history on providing security is clear. But what has to happen is that somebody must fund it. 
And we are saying to the people of the country, for your health and your security, make a contribution of 2.5%. It's not on food. It's not on medicines. It's not, and then I have not even completed the list of, of, of items where, where, where the levy is going to be on. That's, so that, is, that has not been completed. But always in the country, make a contribution. I like to put a tax. Who, which government likes to, 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 to put taxes? But taxes are things that countries have to implement for the country to run. Okay. Yes, DBS. Yes, DBS. Right, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Prime Minister, um, just, just to take your sentiments, are you satisfied with the, I guess, the crime situation in Viewport at this particular time? And do you think that the police have really done their job to satisfy no. your needs? And I also, will, um, an update on the Central Hospital as well. I will never be satisfied once there is any crime. I can't be satisfied once there is any crime. I want to see that there has been a lull. What's happening now is a social intervention to begin to take place. You're going to have some social intervention. Some, if you listen to my budget, you know there are some funds for, for crime suppression. You're going to have to, there are some social interventions that will happen. These are going to begin to kick in. Okay? I'm keeping my fingers crossed. The RSS is still here. They're going to be here for, 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 for some time to work with our, our, our officers. And then we hope that we can take the situation, keep the situation under control. But for now, there has been a lull. And we hope that we can move in now with the social interventions to create the The social interventions, uh, we're working with the private sector, the non-state actors, to deal with social intervention. And from that, that's where I live. Because I don't want, I do not want to get involved in, because these things cannot be partisan. It cannot be political. So the non-state actors are going to be acting on their own. They're going to inform the government. And non-state actors, I talk about the church, the social, the ministry of equity, the, the, the all, all the non-state actors, um, Rice and Lucia, Dr. King, Priest Kailash, all the non-state actors who have a stake in the country's development.